your experiments that you do with your students also, right? You try to understand how finger surfaces perceive softness, right? And you already mentioned that also it's called sense of compliance, right? Just for the audience. Could you please talk more about the reasons behind this particular research, right? Trying to understand the perception of softness and why softness and what are the potential use cases uh, for this type of research? Sure. I th so I think traditionally, if you look at the neuroscience research, people like Roland Johansson, Ken Johnson, and others, a lot of that research involved rigid body stimuli, edges, mm -hmm. gaps, spheres, and mostly they're rigid bodies where they're pressing into a receptive field and doing spike recordings. And that is the case with a lot of the modeling efforts as well. The mechanical engineering modeling efforts have been rigid mm -hmm. bodies. And I would say a lot of the psychophysical studies as well have been like that. But I think that what we really interact with are doing things like touching the hand of another or of picking up an avocado and trying to determine if it's ripe mm -hmm. for safety reasons, really, of grooming where you're touching hair, which is soft, or you're touching, you know, like I mentioned, the skin of another, or you're doing things like massage. So I think that there's a lot of interactions like this that kind of evolutionarily we were tuned towards. And I think that compliant stimuli are much more representative of real nature than our rigid body stimuli. And I wonder if our sensory system was tuned to that. So there was like a number of years ago, I was talking to the, a person who's an Austrian professor, and he talked about a spider. And the spider is a jumping spider, actually. And the spider has a mm -hmm. hair on it. Mm -hmm. And what the spider does is it senses the wake of a fly going over the top of it. The fly flies over, creates a wake in the air. Mm -hmm. And... Um, if that flies too far away, that wake can't reach that hair. If the if it's close enough, then it can reach the hair. And that hair, when they did the mechanical engineering analysis, has been tuned so that a wake that is of a distance that the spider can actually jump to get that fly, it's tuned to pick up that those kind of movements. If you so study what are humans tuned to? <laughs> that's the question. So that's what I'm saying with softness. <laughs> What he talked about was if you move that hair and you move it in a way that's not related to the spider, then it's junk input. And mm -hmm. that, afferent, that neuron, those neurons that are innervating that hair are going to fire, but it might not really mean anything because that spider was never tuned for that kind of a stimulus. So that's my concern sometimes about rigid bodies. Are we really tuned to that? And I think that we need to think about what were the stimuli that we were tuned to. And I think, you know, people like Sliman Benzmaya, who looked into uh, different uh, roughnesses and surfaces like that, and he looked at different textures, that I think was going in that direction, which are much more naturalistic. When you feel something like a denim versus a silk versus, you know, so forth, I think that's a very naturalistic uh, approach to understanding how neurons fire. And I kind of think of compliance in a similar way to that. I think that it's naturalistic as it ties to these evolutionarily derived experiences we've had. And uh, have you thought about any compelling use cases for this knowledge? So now, okay, let's say we know how we perceive softness, what triggers it, uh, what are we tuned to, right? So what could be a good application for this well, knowledge in I mean, terms of technical, tech, haptic tech? Yeah, so personally, the one I'm most interested in right now is massage. And from which perspective, you know, massage is something that is a very common association that I also get in my experiments from people. Oh, it felt like massage, or yeah, some something with massage chair usually. So if I have actuators on the back, but I think it's more than that, right? So can you unpack this in terms of like what exactly massage is? Sure. sure. Yeah. So. Um... Like you've, you've probably had a massage, right? Sure. I mean, I'm sure everyone at some point in their life. I've had it from a chair. 
you know, there's very nice chairs that give massages and I've had it from a person. Yeah, it's different, right? And I think it, it's different, right? And when you have a person- so honest, do, again, back to <laughs> I could ask you a bunch of questions actually on this, but I think with respect to, you know, massage, we know that it works. And in the United States, you have to pay out of pocket, not with ins insurance will not cover massage and mm -hmm. people pay, you know, probably as a country, billions of dollars a year on massages because we know that they work intuitively, but believe it or not, there's no fundamental evidence on the mechanism for why a massage works. We don't know if it's causing the muscle or the skin to soften or that it's releasing some neurotransmitter somehow and that the nerve is calmed down and that's releasing pain. We don't know that if it's the clinician that you're interacting with, you have a particular relationship with, that you feel close to them, that they can calm you and you can calm yourself. And I think that there's a number of questions there, you know, the neuroscience, the biomechanics, the social, uh, there's emotional aspects that are tied into that, that I think are really interesting questions. Mm -hmm. So, but back then haptic tech, like what, what do we want to get from massage? Do we want to improve the technique? Do we want to just understand the fundamentals of perception of massage, how it helps, or I don't know, do we want to create super novel massage chairs i mean what's the idea behind i think the first step is to understand and to understand mm -hmm. what is what is effective uh, i don't i think that the clinicians are very effective but we just don't understand why exactly mm -hmm. i'm not thinking of it i don't think that we should you know I don't think that we're going to learn much that's going to retrain the clinicians per se i think that they they're well trained they know the task they're very good at it but what i think that we need is evidence that these kind of manual therapy treatments work i could imagine a scenario in the future where we don't prescribe as many drugs because there is hands-on therapy and that hands-on therapy helps in many ways social and and all these different dimensions that i've talked about so far i see that as as a a great opportunity and in particular in the united states because we have such issues with uh, musculoskeletal related pain that relates to taking opioids if we could really prove what are the mechanisms that underlie massage it, it could be a game changer in terms of really helping people improve in their lives and functioning mm -hmm.